What's going on everybody? So to get a screen shape working, we're gonna go ahead and work with a camera node. Uh, you should be able to use the 3D node if you'd like. We're gonna be using the 2D node in this example. To this, we're gonna go ahead and add a timer as well as a tween. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and save this scene here and uh, I'll just save it as folder and I'll just save it as camera 2D. Okay. Now uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a script here. Create. And the first thing we're gonna do is grab the timer and tween nodes as on ready variables. We're also gonna create two regular variables, shake amount, which we're gonna set equal to zero, and default offset, which we're gonna set equal to offset, which is the property we're gonna to use to actually shake the camera. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into the inspector of our camera 2D node. We're gonna make sure we select current as true, and we're also gonna change the offset property to be half of whatever our screen window size is. This just makes sure the camera is centered on the screen. Now let's head back into our script here. I'm gonna create the skeleton for what's gonna happen. We're gonna need four functions, one being the ready function, two, the process function, three, a custom function called shake, and then four, we're gonna go ahead and go to our timer node and connect the timer timeout signal. To control exactly when our process function runs, we're gonna set it to false in our ready and timer timeout functions, true in our shake function, and also start our timer in our shake function. This will make it so that the process function only runs between when we call shake and when the timer times out. Now we're gonna flush out our shake function by adding three new arguments, new shake, shake time, and shake limit. We're gonna increment our shake amount by our new shake, clamp the shake amount to the shake limit, and then set our shake timer wait time to the specified shake time. Finally, I'm gonna give the shake time a default value of 0.4 seconds and the shake limit a default value of 100. Now we're gonna write the shake code in our process function. Each process frame, we're gonna set our offset to equal a vector two with an X and Y value of a random range of our shake amount. We're also going to multiply this by delta and add our default offset. Then finally, in the timer timeout function, we're gonna reset our shake amount back to zero and set up a tween to interpolate the offset property back to the center of the screen. We also wanna go ahead and make sure that we stop the tween when we call the shake function so that we can call this function as many times as we want. Now to actually use our camera in game, we're gonna to need to create an auto-loaded script. I'm just gonna make one called globals here. And now in that global script, we're gonna to need to create a new variable called camera and set it equal to null. To make it an auto-loaded script, we're gonna go up to project, project settings, auto-load, click the little file icon here, click our script, and then click add. Then to connect our camera, we're gonna go into our camera's ready function and set globals.camera to equal self. So here's a little scene I made to demonstrate how this camera works. The first thing you wanna make sure you do is add an instance of the camera we just made to your scene. Got that. And then what we'll do in the scene here, so you can see I have some buttons, these three shake buttons here, and I've got them on canvas layers. And we go into these, you can see the on button pressed, globals camera dot shake, and that's what I'm calling it. So globals accessing the global script, camera, that variable, and then we're calling the function shake. As you can see here, we've got a 25, this, and this. So remember that this is the magnitude of the new shake you're adding. This is the time that you'd like it to shake for, and this is the new shake limit if you'd like to call it. You can see here, because the 0.4 is pretty good for me, I've left these as they are. Now, if we click this, you can see what happens. So this is the big shake in a long time, really violent, right? Here is the 100 for 0.4 seconds. You can see it is really nice, it shakes, and then it smooths back to the center. And then finally, we have the 25. Now, if you do this by itself, it's not much, but this is the reason I like my compounding camera. So for instance, if you're shooting a gun, you might want the screen take to build. Press it once, press it twice, and you can keep pressing it, and you can see that it builds, and then it slowly comes back out. And so it's kind of nice because it grows as you go. And that's really something I liked about this screen shake. Now, some things that are important to note, as you can see here, the shake buttons are not shaking with the screen, although the screen is shaking. And so this is like if you had a HUD, you might want those to shake. So all we had to do to achieve this is, as you can see here, I've gone ahead and put these on canvas layers. So we've got the three buttons and they're on a canvas layer. Now. When you put it in a canvas layer, it's by default not going to follow the camera. But if you go to follow viewport and select on, what'll happen, now if we run the scene, is that the, these will shake as well. 
so you can shake the whole HUD. So maybe that might be something you do or don't want, and this is how you can achieve that. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And with that, have a great day.